Hello, everyone. My name is Aaron Standard. I'm one of the founders of the Akka.net project. And today we're going to talk about dependency injection in Akka.net. What are the best practices, patterns, and techniques for doing it? In the early days of Akka.net, we launched a library called Akka.di.core, which had packages that were specific to every dependency injection container that users might want to use in their application. We've since deprecated those packages and instead, what we're recommending for dependency injection is that you install the Akka.dependency injection NuGet package. This is based on top of Microsoft.extensions.dependency injection, which is the library that ASP.NET Core and all the other Microsoft templates use for instrumenting DI. And this library allows Akka.NET developers to use a blend of injected arguments that are provided by your DI container and non-injected arguments, meaning static arguments that might be specific to a single instance of an actor. And this library is designed to be very simple and low overhead. So let's start by taking a look at an example of what typical dependency injection might look like using the Akka.dependency injection library. So the example that we're going to use to demonstrate Akka.dependency injection is actually in the Akka.net central repository itself. So if you want to go ahead and run this sample, you can go ahead and clone the repository here on GitHub. Uh, and the code is inside the source, examples, ASP.NET Core, samples.aka.asp.net Core folder. So we're going to go ahead and pull this down. Okay, so we're looking at the startup.cs class. Uh, so this is where we're going to go and configure our DI container. So we're going to go ahead and bind some simple dependencies. Uh, in this case, we're going to set up a scope dependency of type I hash service, and we're going to bind a, a simple implementation class to it. And this is gonna be the dependency that we're going to pass in to our actors. Uh, now, if we go and take a look at our Akka service, which is how we're gonna start Akka.net in the background inside this ASP.NET application, we're gonna get a I service provider instance passed into the constructor. So this is what we need in order to set up dependency injection inside our actor system as well this I service provider interface, which is what we can use for resolving dependencies when we're launching actors. When our I hosted service starts and creates our actor system, we're gonna go ahead and parse in our Hocon configuration and pass this into what's known as a bootstrap setup, which is a way of programmatically configuring an actor system. And we're also going to create a service provider setup. Uh, this is one of the classes that's part of Akka.dependency injection. And this is how we bind an actor system to a specific service provider instance. We're gonna go ahead and pass in the service provider here. And then we're gonna merge both of these setups together into a single actor system setup, which we can in turn pass into the actor system.create method. And that'll go ahead and bind the actor system to the Hocon configuration we parsed here, as well as bind it to the service provider instance. Now going forward, whenever we wanna go ahead and start an actor and have its arguments uh, provided via dependency injection, we can do that by using the static method right here, service provider four, and then we pass in a reference to our actor system, which you can always access inside any of your Akadana actors using the context property. And we're gonna call the dot props method. This will create a props instance that'll go ahead and instantiate this actor using the service provider under the covers. So this hasher actor right here, if we go and take a look at its implementation, takes an instance of the I service provider interface as one of its constructor arguments. This is following one of Microsoft's recommended best practices for dependency injection, which is that if you have objects that have a long lifetime, they should use the factory methods for retrieving their own dependencies and managing the scopes of them explicitly. And that's what we're gonna do here. We're going to create an I service scope uh, using the service provider .create scope method. And then we're gonna resolve our dependencies from this scope. So we're gonna go ahead and call scope.serviceProvider.getRequiredService and we're gonna retrieve our I hash service. So this I hash service, if we take a look at it real quick, implements the I disposable pattern so we need to make sure that this hash service is disposed whenever our actor shuts down. Well, the easiest way to do that is to retain a copy of our scope as a property or field inside this actor. And then whenever the actor terminates, we simply call scope.dispose. When the post.method is called, this occurs either when the actor is restarting or when it's being terminated. And when scope.dispose is called, 
any dependencies that are transient or scoped, it depends on your container registration, which is which, all those dependencies will be terminated, which means that the I disposable interface on them will be called. This is the proper way to go ahead and ensure a clean dependency injection inside a standard Akadana actor. Now, one more little thing I'd like to demonstrate about Akadot dependency injection is how to inject an actor that has mixed constructor arguments, meaning some arguments are provided via your dependency injection container, others are passed in manually to an actor uh, via the props.create method. Let's go ahead and take a look at how we can accomplish that with the Akadot dependency injection library. All right, so for this demo, I'm actually taking a look inside the aka.dependencyinjection.tests uh, suite here. And this is where we set up our little test uh, dependency injection fixture. So we're registering some services that are in singleton scope, some that are actually scoped, and then others that are just declared in a transient scope. So we go ahead and we declare all these and we build a service provider that we're gonna expose to our unit tests. And then inside our test class, I'm going to scroll down to uh, our unit test that we're going to go ahead and use to validate that we can create an actor that has both some arguments that are passed in via dependency injection and others that are not. So if I take a look at my non-DIR actor, I'm going to go ahead and go to implementation on this. So this actor is going to take a singleton via its constructor, a service provider, and then two string arguments that are not bound to our DI container. We're gonna follow the rest of the usual patterns we just recommended about creating scopes and so forth. And if I take a look at our test, if I go back, you can see that I'm gonna go ahead and grab a hold of our service provider, just like how we did in the other example. I'm gonna create my two string arguments. I'm gonna go ahead and call my service provider extension dot props. I'm gonna pass in my generic type, and then I'm gonna pass in the constructor arguments. Now what's gonna happen is behind the scenes, we're gonna use a component inside the Microsoft.extensions.dependency injection library, who's gonna go ahead and be responsible for instantiating this actor and figuring out which positions in the constructor arguments uh, these arguments should go. So that's kind of part of the Microsoft functionality that's in there. Nevertheless, we're gonna go ahead and pass in this props into our actor of method and create an instance of this actor. And I can go ahead and fetch all the dependencies inside that actor, and I can see that all those dependencies are not exposed. And I can also go ahead and fetch the string arguments. This is all just part of how I program the actor. I can go ahead and fetch the string arguments from this actor, and I can see that both of these arguments were passed in via the props method up here, and that all of my assertions are gonna go ahead and pass. So this is how you can go ahead and mix and match uh, dependency injected arguments with non-dependency injected arguments. So I've walked through some of the functionality on how to use Akka.dependency injection with your own Akadana actors, and I hope you've all found that to be quite helpful. I want to leave you with some best practices for using dependency injection with Akka.net. And this is all per Microsoft's own dependency injection guidelines, which uh, we'll link to in the description. But Typically, you want to inject the I service provider into your actors and use that service provider to create a service scope, which you can use to manage the scope dependencies your actor takes over the course of the actor's lifetime. And then when you're done using that actor, inside your post stop method, you should go ahead and dispose the service scope that you use to resolve all of your dependencies. This will ensure that everything is properly cleaned up when your actor shuts down and that no resources leak. So we hope you enjoy Akadot Dependency Injection. Uh, please let us know in the comments if you run into any issues or questions with it, and we'd be happy to answer them. Thank you very much.